I found this dresser yesterday sitting in front of my building next to the trash cans for absolutely free. It is beautiful and vintage. It's solid wood and really pretty well taken care of. It needs a little bit of love, but for the most part, it's pretty perfect. It most certainly does not fit right here. It's blocking two doors um, quite a bit, but as we know, I'm supposed to be moving soon. I have some updates on that. So this is a good temporary spot, but come on, how can you pass up a furry, beautiful dresser like that? It is a little bit small, but I think I'm gonna use it to store a lot of the little winter and outdoorsy things. But it has this little panel on the front of it that I think I want to paint. I don't really know what I wanna do there yet, but I have one idea. So I think what I'm gonna do now is just paint this section white and let that dry and go forward from there. Okay, so we have Grim Helmet. I really do like it. That one little area right there, I think would be really pretty with maybe a plant design in it. I don't know. I wanna do something simple as to not distract from how beautiful it is, but I think it might be fun to try something. So let's paint it white. Alrighty, now just to let that dry. While that dries, I figured I could give you a little bit of an update on the housing situation. Because my goodness has it been insane. I have been kind of filming the process in a lot of little updates here and there. I do have a couple of housing updates-ish for you. And my goodness, is it absolutely insane? And I have some bad news that is also unknown news right now, but also bad, I don't know. But recently, with the events that have taken place, I decided that it might be a little bit better to just talk through the whole situation and where we're at now. So this is not exactly the update that I want to be giving you, but it is an update and I wanna get this video out to you all. And I probably won't have any further updates in the time that I want to get this to you. So let's start with this story. I think where we left off I was telling you about this wonderful house that we fell in love with and really really wanted but there were some issues with the landlord wanting to have a little bit more information on how to be a landlord. Perfectly understandable, very fair. It has been quite a bit of time since that. We had decided that there would be a cutoff date for that house of if we weren't able to sign on at that point, we were gonna go with our backup house. And we spent the two weeks leading up to that calling the rental agency, trying to get updates. They never picked up their phone. They never emailed us back. We did not hear anything from them and that's just insane. And so the listing was still live. It still seemed like they were trying to rent it, but there were no updates. And so on the day that we were gonna go with our backup house, I logged on to send a message to that house and it was taken off the market, <laughs> which was always a possibility and something that I was prepared for, but for it to happen on the day that we were giving up on the other house was kind of a lot to process. 
in the meantime, we had been touring other homes, but we hadn't found any that we liked. And then after we were not able to contact the house that we wanted and our backup house was gone, we really buckled down and started looking at a bunch of homes and spent the entirety of that weekend and the following week looking at homes. And there was one winner on the Monday after that weekend. And we fell so deeply in love with this home. Still love this home. Uh, we got home and sent in all our applications. No one else had an application in on the home. Felt really good about it. And then the company started to drag their feet a little bit, which is okay. They were very busy. But at this point, we had less than two weeks to move out. And um, actually, I was supposed to be out of this apartment the day that you're getting this video. I was supposed to be out of here at noon that day. That's not happening anymore, but I'll explain in a bit. So we got all the stuff in, still kept touring houses, didn't see any that we really cared for. I messaged them halfway through the week just to get an update, and they needed a couple more papers. My job is a little weird, so I usually have to send in a couple of extra things just to prove my finances, uh, working for yourself. People just want usually a couple years of tax returns or things like that, so that's easy enough, but always a secondary ask. Send that stuff in, send information in on the dogs. They are big German shepherds, so people don't always love that, but they're great babies, so worked out and finally we were in the process of them doing the background checks and previous landlord checks. Now we did run into one catch here. Most places don't really want to rent to people with dogs. This house has been a rental house for many many years and it has the wear and tear of being lived in by many many people so I'm not personally concerned about having my dogs also live there and I'm taking a lot of precautions to make sure that they don't add wear to the house that isn't already there or um, isn't appropriate for living in the home. I've run into this a lot with rentals with dogs, it is just part of it. They do try to find any way to not let you rent. And in this instance, they wanted to hear from every single landlord of the last three years. And there was one landlord who was on vacation and wasn't calling them back about the rental history from over a year ago for my partner, which is fine. That's normal to maybe not get in contact with six individual people, right? And so we reached one full week of waiting to hear about this house, and then we had less than a week to get out of this apartment. And that was very stressful, and so trying to get in touch with that landlord and also try to talk to the company and just say, do you really need all of them? And the answer was yes. So we were finally in contact. The landlord, I don't think, understood the gravity of the situation, which why would they? And so um, they were kind of taking their time, which was very okay, but the days were ticking away. It was then Wednesday and I had to be out of here by Sunday. And then it was Thursday. And Thursday afternoon, we got the email that said, you know what, let me just read the email to you. <laughs> because honestly, at this point, I could not believe it. Let's just, before I read this email, I want us to remember that we had been completely just dropped by another home and still haven't heard back from them. And it's been two months of working with them. And also they told us early this past week that they would be in contact and they were not. And all of this stuff, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Never in my life have I tried so hard to give someone money. After all of that, stuff after seeing ends of homes and just falling really deeply in love with this house. It is in the perfect area. It's really close to our friends. It's close to a lot of the places that we like to go. It's got this beautiful yard and a big old rosemary bush out front. I mean, it's just unbelievably perfect and so in love with it. It's better even than the first house that we were so in love with. And so we had been putting in so much time and it was Thursday and we were we were certain that this was the day that we would be able to get the landlord to message and we were told by the company that once they get the information from the landlord the lease and the keys will be right away. Keep this in mind. So we thought okay 
Thursday, we'll be able to get the lease and the keys and then we'll be able to start moving and boy, will it be difficult to get out of here in less than three days, but anything's possible when you are determined enough. And um, so yeah, all of that, all of that stress. And then this email property manager just received a call from a neighbor that the home has been broken into. Building manager is placing a 911 call as we speak and we need to pull the home off the market, at least temporarily while we sort this out. So at this point, we have been working on finding a home for almost two months, actually two months about, have gone to so many put in for so many and then the two that we are really really in love with have just <laughs> it is insane it is insane I don't even have the words to describe what is going on and again this was Thursday afternoon I needed to be out of this apartment Sunday afternoon and this was it this was the last house that we had liked that we put so much time and energy in and there wasn't going to be time to get this sorted out. And then to top it all off, about an hour after we got that email, the landlord that we had been waiting for made the phone call and we got our lease fully approved. Except for now it's off the market. <laughs> now thankfully, and so unbelievably luckily, I have the best building managers at this building in the world and they were doing some inspections on the apartments and they came into mine and my building manager asked me how the house hunt was going because of course if you come into the home that is supposed to be vacant in three days and it's still very full i would have questions as well and i explained the situation and he said you know this could be a blessing in disguise and he asked if i wanted a one month extension <laughs> And oh my gosh, I almost cried. <laughs> they are the best. I've lived here for two years. I love this building and I am going to really miss it. But I never expected to be able to get an extension on it. It explicitly says in the lease that I have that that's really not a possibility. And so it is so kind of them to offer that. And it has been the saving grace in this whole situation. So everything is kind of okay in that I can be here for the rest of April while well, this is sorted out. The one okay update with this house, it did get broken into, I don't know all of the details of it, but in continued communication with the building manager there, he said that they are working with the police and everything to try to sort it out. I don't know if there are repairs or what is going on with it, but he did say that it ideally will be taken care of in within one week. And this was on Friday. So hopefully within the week, we will be able to hear if we're able to move in. But oh my goodness, never in my life have I ever had such a difficult time trying to find a home. I mean, finding housing is always challenging, especially with dogs, but oh my goodness, <laughs> never like this. It is. It has been insane. I don't think I've ever been this stressed out genuinely ever and I've dealt with a lot of stressful things in my life but you know housing is a very important part of living and while I can have some backups and and it would be ultimately kind of okay I have people it is still really not ideal to not know where your home is gonna be. And so I was um, very freaked out there for a little while. The reason that this isn't really the update I wanna give you is because it's still completely up in the air and I've been having a very hard time working and filming because I was supposed to be out of here March 1st and I had packed up quite a bit of my life before that, about a week or two before that because I thought I was moving and now as March is coming to a close, I have packed up the vast majority of my things. The only things that I have unpacked now are the things that I engage with on the daily. So I don't have very much of my life accessible 
I have been kind of unpacking things here and there, trying to grab what I need when I need it, but I also don't know where everything is exactly because it's kind of generally packed, like all of my herbs. I have them spread out across six different boxes and I didn't label every single herb in each of them because I thought I was going to be unpacking them in a week and so it's just been kind of difficult to go about life when all of my life is closed away. I put away a lot of my baking supplies and um, just things that I enjoy working with. It's been hard to, hard to, harder to create. Right now I'm still in that limbo. I'm really hoping that this house will work out and that we'll be able to get into it. But we also still don't have that much time. My partner's lease ends in two weeks. Even though there's still a little bit more time there, that's not a lot of time. And so if this house doesn't work, we're re-entering that time crunch of really needing to get a place. And it's just been really stressful and crazy. And I just wish that I could tie this up in a bow and honestly show you this beautiful home that I've fallen in love with. So fingers crossed that that will be the next video and that we'll be able to get in next week. I will for sure be sharing more about these things on Instagram as they go if we are able to get in. But right now it's just been absolutely crazy and I just don't even know what to think. And honestly, even just telling this story now, I feel like it's impossible to express how insane it's been because this has been going on for two months. It's not just this culmination in one week, it's two months of just crazy. But ultimately, it is all going to be done here soon. There will be a home and there will be peace and I'm just gonna hold on to that. That's the craziness that's been going on. Let's go check on the dresser and see if I can work on painting it yet. It's still a little bit tacky so it's probably not time to paint it. I do think I want to give it a second coat just to make sure it's all perfect. It's a little bit cracking and see-through in places so I'm gonna do that. And I think I'm gonna close this video out here. Thanks for coming along with me on this update that is not the best update, but just a story of where I'm at. I very much look forward to giving you the better update that hopefully will come next week. So I'll see you very, very soon.